What's up, my man, Eli? How you doing? Jason, great to be here. You too, brother. Well, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Welcome to uh, the, like hanging out like <laughs> and recording it. We've never done this, but um, let's just start off. You know, a lot of people probably know you on Instagram and TikTok as Coach Eli, but where did, um, how did you become Coach Eli? What's your story? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> First of all, I love what you're doing, Jason. Always, you know, you've been uh, an inspiration for me throughout my journey. Uh, uh, you're the man. So much love. So thank you for having me, first of all. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah. No, Coach Eli started. Um, I mean, I think I've always kind of been um, one to lead others. And like ever since I was a kid on the playground, I was always like the team captain. And I, nice. and I stuck with that. However, when I got to high school, kind of went down like, uh, got into the wrong crowds uh, and kind of fell up like wasn't myself bad grades uh, and I got really injured actually and through the injury I hurt my back and but through the back pain I actually found movement and so the coach Eli started when I started learning about movement and healing my body I loved it so much I wanted to start helping other people and training them so I became a trainer right and so that was a, that's a quick rough background we'll, we'll talk more about that but like through that is when I started be, like being a coach and it was funny because uh, a couple of years ago I had a I had a TikTok account right and I was like posting some funny skits on there like I didn't know what to do with it I'm like because first of all I'm an, I'm an actor first and foremost so I wanted to actually before fitness I wanted to try some acting stuff on TikTok and it didn't work out really well like I didn't really do much with it but uh, I wanted to try online fitness coaching right so I was an in-person trainer and I wanted to, to transition to online because I wanted to work remotely I wanted to travel you know I was I was hearing you can you can do uh, make great money with it right and I was like okay all these things sound great and so I um had a t I, I basically put, posted a, a movement video a, a fitness video a posture video on TikTok right before I posted though I switched my name from Eli James to coach dot Eli <laughs> That that so that when you actually ask me, well, how did that start? It was when I changed my name to Coach Eli on TikTok, and then I posted a video, and then I a couple of days later because I forgot I even posted it. A couple of days later, woke up to like all these video views, a million views, all these hits, and I was like, oh wow, okay, maybe we found something here. So that's that's like the little rough beginning of the actual name Coach Eli. I just I switched it on TikTok to my handle Coach Eli, and it just kind of stuck with it uh, from there. Well, that's, that's, yeah, that's like the exoteric story of how the, but, but the truth is like, I've worked with you, like you understand how the body is connected, like better yeah, than almost yeah. anyone on the planet. So can you like explain, you, I know you had an injury and that yeah. led you to, yeah. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a lot of people know me as coach Eli. Uh, my full name is actually Elijah James uh, Maddelson and nice. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I come from a really big family. I live in LA and um, you know, when I, so back to the back injury, when I was 16, you know, I grew up very athletic, right? Like very mm -hmm. into health and movement. Um, but once I got to high school, I was just so scrawny and like, like, you know, bullied a lot through middle school. And then up into high school, I joined the drum line and, and on the drum line, I was carrying a drum on my body, you know, marching with it on the marching band. And the drum was bigger than me, you know? So it was like brutal. And these guys this is, this is funny because the guys on the drum line, like the coaches, they, they did not give us any type of instruction when it comes to like how to lift, how to bend over, how to pick up the drums. You know, they just say, Hey, stay rigid, stay tall, stay straight, you know, suck in the stomach and like, don't lean back. You know, if you start, if your back hurts, just don't lean back. So it was so funny because the one thing they told us not to do was don't lean back because when you lean back as you're holding a drum, cause I had a, I had the tenor drum and it was in front of my body like this and leaning back would help alleviate some of that pressure pulling me forward. And so I'm pushing my spine into extension, my lower back into extension and even they said, don't do that. It's not good for you. So they know nothing about the body, yet they knew not to lean back. And guess what I did? Because I literally would have dropped it. And they said, do not drop it. I was trembling. I leaned back to alleviate the, the, the pain. And I, you know, that over time, over that whole semester of leaning back and, and marching when I was very like scrawny and fragile and weak, uh, it did some, some pretty intense stuff to the lower spine and my hips in particular. And so I was just I was, I was done after that semester. I never went back to drumline. Uh, I had this weird back pain and sometimes I couldn't sit up straight out of bed. I couldn't really skateboard that much anymore. I couldn't, I couldn't really play basketball, do the things I kind of love to do. 
And I was like, dude, I'm 16, 17. Like, what am I, what's my future going to look like if I don't make some change? And so we got x-rays, did all that stuff. You know, that didn't really show much. Um, and I started going to physical therapy. But in the physical therapy office, I was like, wow, you know, you can really heal your own body through your own will, your own intention, like your own, like just dedication, right? And so like the guys helped me at physical therapy. It helped, it worked, but it wasn't until... I was at a, such a low point in my life that I was like, I never want to feel like this way again. Like, I want to be like, I want to be strong. Like, I want to be healthy. I want to be out of pain. And like, I want to like grow muscle. I want to be bigger. I'm tired of being skinny. Like, eh, I'm tired of getting picked on at school, you know? And so I said, you know what? I'm going to start on this path of healing my own body. And so I studied. Uh, I I I took up the the local you know yoga class. I asked my dad to buy me a gym membership, right? And so I started training and working on my body, and I just fell in love with the process of that, right? And when I started like doing some just yoga in the backyard, with my brother, like I started doing that on my own. And I found during these moment these these moments of movement to myself when there's no music on, it's just me and myself. It felt like it felt like something I never experienced before, like because I never really did stuff like that. You know, I was like 16, 17, you know, I'm over here doing yoga flows and stuff. Like I never did that stuff before. Right. I, you know? And so like, I was, you know, skateboarding, eating pop tarts, you know, and like, <laughs> like, wait, what was I doing at 16? So I started doing yoga and like, I was, I like, it really got rid of a lot of my anxiety. It really helped my back. And I was like, just felt like, you know, almost like Zen and like calm and cool, collected. I was like, I'm onto something here. And so I just kept at it. I started meditating. I started doing, uh, uh, I started lifting weights and strength training. And I was just, I was hooked. I was hooked. I was hooked. And I would just move every single day, move, 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 move. I've always been into dance and, and things like that. And so I kind of like combined that. I started doing kind of flow based um, movement right on the ground. And I was like, man, like, it's just felt like an out-of-body experience. I felt so present when I was doing these types of movements. And that that was really what catapulted me into this whole entire ecosystem of, like, health, fitness, was me just working on my own body all those hours in the backyard. And, look, it was not easy. It was not like, oh, I just fixed myself like that. Like, no, no. I went to the gym to lift heavy weights. I got more hurt. Like, I asked other people for help. I asked the huge jack guys for help. None of what they told me worked because I'm not them, you know? And so I learned through a lot of different mentors and coaches and trial and error, you know? And I just started wanting to help other people. You know, I finally figured it out. I healed my own body. Uh, and then I just really wanted to start helping other people. And so all those hours spent on yourself, that's the that's the wisdom that you, know, you get from that, right? And so uh, that is, that's the movement and fitness in the, in, the, in the journey of those initial years for me. Whoa, man. And you see, <laughs> Oh, that, that's the that's the most fascinating thing is that the injury became your superpower yeah the injury so it's it's so crazy how that works but um totally totally comes full <laughs> circle comes full full circle because that's why when i now express in my content like pain and things on the body it's like because i was there you know i was in that pain and i'm talking from that firsthand experience mm. i think that makes all the difference and and, and, and you, you mentioned know. mentors was there a particular mentor? It seems like, you know, you were very self-taught, like you just listened to your body and it's just like kept, oh, oh, that felt good. So did, but did you have a human mentor or, or a few? I know your brother is a wrestler. Yeah, yeah my, brother, my brother was a big, big one initially because he too had a hip injury that he had a rehab mm -hmm. from. And so he taught me all he showed me the ropes when it comes when it came to working out and, and lifting properly and and the biomechanics and like the yoga and all those initial movements that he knew and so he was a huge influence because he was so dedicated he didn't really lead by his words he led by his example and i followed mm -hmm. suit and so you know i would always be like hey can i come with you to the gym today hey can i come with you to the gym today <laughs> and he really wouldn't say much i just went and followed him around and so that was huge for me uh in those initial years and um, you know, people you meet through just these activities, his friends, right? Some mentors you, you get along the way and, you know, watch people online, you know, really early stages of Instagram was back then. So I'd follow a few different people. Can't really remember who they were, but I know I, 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 I definitely read a lot. Uh, I studied, I actually went to college for initially it was for physical therapy. And, uh, I was like, Hey, I, I like, I like basketball. Maybe let me become like a trainer on a basketball team, like physical therapist or something. And that was my initial idea. And so I went to college to study that, studied exercise science and biomechanics. 
and then i mean i, I switched to theater but that's a whole other story so <laughs> there's, there's, there's definitely uh you know there's mentors along the way initially definitely for sure um my brother beautiful but you know you what i love about people like you i'm, I'm kind of the same way is that you didn't fought, you didn't have like a path let out for you like you've just been figuring this out and going after what you need to heal from or what you're curious about and you're like and that and then once you follow that journey you just start learning and the knowledge just gets bigger and bigger and then you apply it to yourself and then so so yeah no you're you're, you're just doing incredible with how you've taken that you know a lot of people like us can aren't as successful as you at the moment you know with just being able to take your journey and then you know kind of create something you call it embody right is that is that the company embody mm -hmm. yeah that's my 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 movement coaching company Perfect. embody you know so so on that note yeah so what you know you look at people all day long on their cell phones and overall what are the what's the biggest couple of things that you see people in 2023 doing that is absolutely like horrible for what 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 for their, <laughs> their movement like you see being a big problem in 10 years or 20 years. Well, I think the cool thing is, or maybe not cool is the right word, but I mean, I find these things, things fascinating, but maybe it might people think it's scary, but <laughs> we don't actually know the long-term consequences mm. yet. You know, when was the iPhone came out in like 07, I think. And, and it hasn't been that long. We don't even know the long-term consequences of holding something like this all day. I mean, maybe you can ask like these people that get arthritis from their job back in the in the fifties, people that are hundred now, whatever they were doing with their hands, right? You hear these stories all the time, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, are we going to all be like that at 80? Like we're all going to have arthritis because holding these phones, like we don't know yet. And I find that kind of fascinating and intriguing. And so I say, why let's not, let's not even find out. How about we take the proactive approach and start doing, <laughs> and start, start doing something right now? Um, you know, but I think it boils down to like, yeah, you know, people are hunched over staring at their screens, right? We're, we're sitting down, right? We're commuting. No, over half, I think now it's up to 50% of America is working from home or something pretty absurd. And uh, I think it's, it just boils down to lack of activity, you know, just a lack of movement, you know, uh, because there's really no, there's really no bad position. Uh, there's only bad execution of the position. And uh, the, the consequences and the side effects of being in these positions too long, that's the thing, you know, it's like, look, dude, I was earlier hunched over on my phone doing work. It's that's okay for a little bit. You know, it's when you're doing that all day, every day, and nothing's changing and you're not doing anything to counteract that. So right. I think it's boiled down to just a lack of activity, a sedentary lifestyle. We know replacing 30 minutes of sitting with 30 minutes of walking, like it can add, add a little bit of years to the life. Probably like there's studies out there. Oh yeah. Like, like seven years. I think they say seven years, just walking alone. Like, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we, we know these things, you know, and so we, if we can just get back to simply starting to um, take responsibility, first and foremost, for every action we take throughout the day and mm -hmm. find freedom within our circumstance and not be the victim of our desk job, of our office job, of our commute and traffic, of whatever it is, no matter what, and this is what I show on my page, and this is why it's called Embody, is if we can get back into being more aware of our body in time and space all throughout the day, every single day, it's going to give us more opportunity to move in a way that's going to add years to the life, potentially, right? I mean, if the studies are right, in a way that's going to make us feel better, in a way that's going to make us look better, in a way that's going to make us, you know, have improved health markers at our next oh, doctor. Function, function better. And function better. Those and are my two words, like feeling and function. Like, like I'm not sure, I could, we could, I could get hit by a car and die. But, but I, I take care of my health so much because I want to feel and function good right now. And that is a huge distinction. I'm glad you said that because yeah. it's not just about feeling better. And I tell people this all the time in my content. Sure, you just did a movement I showed you. Of course, it felt better. But can you actually start functioning better by doing these movements? And the answer is yes, with consistency. So feeling and function, those two combined are huge uh, to actually really making real change in your body. So uh, absolutely, I would say, you know, back to the question is really just a lack of activity. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, this is awesome because, you know, what we do is so complimentary and I'll admit, you know, as you, you know, I'm super into food and how it affects your body. Like I'm, that's my obsession. 
um, herbs and all that kind of stuff. So I'm like, and, and I do yoga, you know, for 20 years, but the one thing that I learned so much from you, like, like, like a, a waking awakening to like, I would do yoga and, I, but health of the body, you know, like I'm doing yoga for like an hour a day, but the rest of the day I'm, I'm walking wrong. I'm, I'm doing so many things like, like that overextension that, that you're famous for, which I want to ask you about, it, about this. And then, um, so it's really cool. And, and, and I think, yeah, you, you kind of are pioneer. And I, I think this is going to be a, when people, when I was younger, health was like drinking a diet, a diet Coke instead of a Coke, you know, now we've come a long way with, with like nutrition, but I think you're right. I think, I think most people, this is what I'm trying to say. Most people think of like posture body as like going to the gym and lifting weights or, and, or maybe doing some yoga. But what you're doing is mm -hmm. what you're doing all day long and how you can change little habits, little like awarenesses and habits. And yep. it's incredible. It's incredible. So I think I think there's going to be more and more people like you and you're going to be busy training people to do what you do. And it's awesome, dude. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it really, you know, it's I like to say fitness when we use that word, people think of it as a hobby mm. instead of a, yes, your fitness is your fitness level. Mm. That's like your fitness level. Fitness is, has been popularized, commercialized since, since what, after World War II or, or gyms started popping up industrial revolution. We stopped walking 20 miles a day, right? Like mm -hmm. or 20,000 20, steps a day. And so uh, I say one of the biggest, I think issues with the people living sedentary lifestyles is that they, they think, they're not, they're just not a fitness person. So they're just, you know, that's just something fitness people do. And it's like, whoa, wait a minute. Fitness is just your fitness level. Everyone, I mean, fitness is like you were born fit, you know, like you're, you're born just how, how fit, how I say fitness is how prepared are you, right? Like how fit and ready are you for life and all of its stressors? You know, like that's literally, I think what it can boil down to. And just, we, we've, we've, popularize it made it look sexy magazine covers you know like <laughs> that's fitness no 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 that's like you know that's culture right it's like a nomenclature now is the word fitness instead of just like your fit and your activity level like your your ability your, of your way to move right and what i'm doing is not sexy the things i'm talking about are not sexy and yet they do really well online is because it's truth it's truth and so that's what it boils down to is let's get rid of these weird, like, okay, fitness is a hobby. No, no. Fitness and movement and health is a part of every single person. How ready and prepared are you for your life? Ask yourself that question. And, well, and with that being said, our lives do not demand a lot from us anymore. Physically. People could go through their entire day without actually squatting all the way down to the ground. Well, well that's why, like, you know, I think you'll appreciate this. Like I always, when I'm in the grocery store, I try to carry the food. Like we've talked about that. And, and like, um, if it's like, if I have to move stuff, like I'll just be like, okay, cool. This is going to be a workout. And I squat to pick things up. You showed me that technique, how to properly like hinge and pick up yeah. heavy objects without throwing my back out. So, so yeah, it's just like, try to try to kind of, uh, you know, do things, find, get, get excited about things in your day that you can you can squat and do something right like squat on the toilet or something yes and don't be afraid to fail and fall over mm. okay if i want you to fall over how many times does a baby fall over learning to walk thousands mm. thousands per day why'd we stop failing why do we stop falling over because we're conditioned to think that oh i failed you know i'm a screw up i'm a, I'm, a, I'm fat i'm immobile you know i'm tight i'm weak let me tell you something. I've trained a lot of people. I talk to people online. Uh, no one's weak. The human body is extremely strong and resilient. Some people just, you know, forget how to move right because you know, they don't do it anymore. And so don't be afraid to fail. Squat, try something new, you know, fall flat on your face, you know, get back up because that's the point. The body is built to be resilient and resist that. So, uh, yeah, man, I mean, you're, you know, you're hitting it right on the head. I, I, it's great. I was going to add, that was the question I was going to ask you after the first one, but let, let's go there. It was like that. Is that your advice beyond, beyond the physical body and movement and posture? What's your, that, is that your advice for people in life? Is that like your, one of your 
really guiding principles is to, is to not be afraid to fail. Like you, you take, take chances and. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and when you like, if we just keep talking about, you know, opportunities to move, if you go right now, find a bar, find something to hang from, and you tell yourself you're not going to let go. Like it's a pretend it's a life or death situation. Watch how much longer you'll you'll hang on that bar because these are just mental hurdles that we have to get through. Which is why I would come back to the point of our bodies are not weak and don't be afraid to fail. And yes, besides just physical movement, yes, in your life all day every day, don't be afraid to go for it. Don't be afraid to fail. Is because it's I go by life like it's not a competition for me. Like I'm not com competing with anybody outside of me. Anybody, <laughs> I'm just I'm with myself, right? And so I want to get better personally every single day. And so uh, that is one of my guiding principles. And it's something I tell all my clients is like, you know, you're remember, you're, remember who you're doing this for. And it's, and it's about you yourself is because when you start to see what it's like to hang from a bar for as long as you can, when you realize you're stronger than you think you are, it's really, really empowering. It's really empowering. And so it's, well, it's so important. We have these free things at our disposal, which is go try something, go try to step onto a high, something high with your leg, right? And push yourself up onto it, right? And don't be afraid to fall, you know, put something soft behind you. Sure, I'm not saying go out, do something. Because that can really spark some real change. That's awesome, man. You got me really motivated. You're right. I'm just thinking like <laughs> people, no, really, I got to get back into what, you, what you've taught me and everything. Like, you know, people think like, yeah, building your body or wait for something to hurt and then try to fix it instead of just, I'm guilty of that, you know, like, it's, it's like, this is something we all are. I am too. We all are. We yeah. all are, you know, um, but this is why I even talk about, look, man, you know, how many people I know that work out and like go to the gym and do yoga and guess what? They're waking up stiff and in pain. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's because, like I said, it's, unless you're like training, like an athlete, like mo it's not it's most, for most people, it's not enough and it's not sustainable to just say, I go to the gym three times a week and I'm going to do that for the rest of my life. It's just at some point, there's going to be some season of your life where you stop doing that. Right. There's just going to be something. So you got to like, that's why I want to start right now with giving you some type of thing where it's like, I want you to know, like Jason just knows, like before I get on the plane, like, I just know I'd have this five minute routine that I'm going to do for my spine. That's going to make my entire flight make me feel 20 times better. And when I get off, you know, like, I want you to know what to do for your own body. So you feel your best and operate at your best and function at your best every single day. And for some reason, maybe you get sick, something happens, you're immobilized for a week. You're like, man, I know it's going to take me probably about 14 days on the dot to get back to where I was. Like, that's how in tune you are and tapped in. And that's where we want to get to. And it sounds like a big thing. It's really not because you're going to know your body better than anyone else. Uh, it's like studying uh, a subject. When you start to study the way your body responds and reacts, you're going to know what to do for yourself. You're going to know what makes you feel your best, what makes you function your best, what works, what doesn't. And then, then you get to create your own version of fitness or whatever you want to call it. And so that's how aware I want my people that I interact with and the people I talk to online of, of their body that I want them to be is that these things can be really simple and we don't think they're that simple because we think we have to go to the gym four times a week and do all these other things. And it's just, it's not the case. Wonderful, man. Yeah. So how do people work with you? I know you have this, you did this 30 day thing. Cause I, cause is, is that what you want to direct people towards or. Yeah, absolutely. You can check me out online. If you just type in coach Eli, E-L-I, uh, you'll find my TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. And uh, if you want to start with some simple movement some, that you can start doing all throughout your day, like some of the things I'm talking about right now, then absolutely, I would check out. You can click the link on any of those pages. It'll take you to um, my 30-day posture progression program. It's like a 30-day virtual flip book that you can go through and follow along to and has some really powerful movements uh, that'll help you feel better, perform better, function better, and give you a taste of what it's like to start adding in some movement, uh, you know, not just in the morning or not just twice a week, but, you know, in little bursts throughout your day to break up some long periods seated or you got a plane ride, whatever it is to make you feel like better through your 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 upper back, your spine in particular, your neck, uh, all those areas for that, that, that upper body posture. And so I would say definitely check that out. And, you know, if you're interested in consultations or potentially coaching one-on-one, -on -one, you know, we have one-to-one -one fitness coaching, health coaching, movement coaching, and a community of other people, uh, then you could also click the link on one of those pages. It'll take you embodycoachingmethod.com. We'll take you to our uh, little video. You can watch the training, see how it works, and you can apply uh, for a spot 
uh, for coaching. Nice, nice, man. Yeah, I've done I've done a little bit of both. I've done your flip book. I haven't finished it because I've been moving around a lot. But I did the first seven days, and it's incredible, like just how simple it is. And I would never have thought to do those particular movements. And um, and I've also got the one the one on one coaching is really amazing because you get to really you know see see what you see what's going on in a person, and then yeah, yeah, the personalized stuff. What were the pillars? Yeah, yeah. So the nine pillars to living an embodied life, it's more of my philosophy about, you know, what has helped me go from someone that was, you know, in pain, uh, you know, uh, to someone who is can now help other people get out of pain, like what really helped me along my journey. And there was nine pillars. Uh, we don't have to get into all of them. But it really, you know, it's it's about, you know, movement, it's about nutrition, it's about sunshine, it's about quiet time, play time. Uh, it's about, you know, community. And, and, uh, you know, time, time to yourself spent with yourself, right? Whether that be through, you know, sitting down, breathing, meditating, feeling your body, we do a lot of body scan meditations, where we can, you know, feel sensations happening at the knees, under the arms, on the forearms, things like that, you know, to get you out of your head and into your body. And that's really the philosophy of the coaching, you know, it's about getting out of your head and into your body. Uh, and when you're in your body, things are, I like to say, there's, when you're in your body, you're present, you're really present. And when you're really present, there's more opportunity for joy. And when there's more joy, man, there's so many possibilities, you know, like that's what life's about. And so Dude, I just got to tell you, you literally just quoted the Buddha, which is basically when I'm trying to, I'm trying to think, but it's like, yeah, when you, when you're feeling good, you're going to have joy. And that joy is an opportunity to really, you know, have some spiritual breakthroughs. Yeah, yeah, that's exact. That's it. You so I, I love how I love how and, and and going back to feeling and function, which is awesome. I think that's where we really connect on is is that's why I do everything from eating healthy to doing my best to do what you do and yoga is because when I feel my body has these like vibrations of goodness, you know, going through them, then you know, you want to, you read some philosophical text and you want to contemplate on it. You just, it just kind of circulates through your body. Like the idea goes in your head and wow. just kind of, kind of goes deep. I just thought of that, but it's kind of, it's kind of true, man. Wow. Wow. You can just call me the Buddha Eli. Let's get rid of the coach. <laughs> exactly. No, <laughs> I definitely think, I, I definitely think you have some past life. Uh, yeah. Cause, cause you, cause you just, you, you gravitate so much to, for people who don't know you personally, like, you know, you gravitate so much towards meditation and yeah exploring yeah some some philosophical existential kind of questions and which we, we talk about a lot <laughs> yeah, yeah man absolutely uh i think that all goes with that that feeling that you're talking about feeling the body all of that and it goes back to a lot of my teachings on my page and i know you wanted i know you wanted to talk about some of that the, the extension right <laughs> um and it goes back to feeling if you can be in your body throughout your day and adjust yourself you know like, it's just, I think it's a healthy habit to be in, you know, I think it'll make you more present, make you a little bit less stressed. Uh, it's not to that we should worry about, I don't want you worrying about your posture, or the way you're, you're moving or, you know, like, oh, God, I've been walking wrong the whole time. It's like, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I want you to, to feel empowered. Now, I want you to feel like compelled to move more. And I want you to feel like you have like, more opportunities now all throughout the day that you didn't see before. Uh, and so that's what it's about. It's about freedom. Autonomy is one of my core values. Uh, and it's about using movement to achieve that. No, you're right. It, it's like when people find out they're doing something like wrong, quote unquote wrong with their body, like instead of getting upset, just realize that when you actually correct that, your body's going to reward you with feeling better. Like that's the whole point. Like, if, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and that's true with everything, you know, whatever you notice like, oh, I could be doing this better. Wow. Yeah, there's a moment of embarrassment and a little regret. Like, I wish I would have learned this sooner. Yeah, but then, yeah. you know, like you could be 80 years old and you could implement, right? I'm sure you work with people like older and yeah. stuff and all oh, ages. Yeah. 70 year olds. I trained an 80 year old at a gym once, you know, and it's never, never too late. You know, at any age, any stage of the healing journey, whatever you're on, you know, you can start today. Uh, right now in this moment by doing something you know for your body that will make you feel and function better <laughs> but dr lou says like the best time was 20 years ago the second best time is right now <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one yeah that's sure. awesome man so so let's do this again 
I think this was a lot of fun. I love talking to you. And I, and I do really, you know, just recommend everybody just really give some thought to what you're saying. It's like, I, I, I'm like, want to kind of scream at people like, yo, like what you eat, what you put in your mouth three times a day and what you put on your skin, all those chemicals is going to affect not just like, it's not like, oh, I don't care how long I live, Like you're not going to feel as good. And I think what you're doing is like equally important. And like, you know, all the things that people worry about and invest their money and time into, it's like, you know what I mean? Like, until, again, until you're in a lot of pain or yeah. until, you know what I mean? And, and that's, and so hopefully this awareness, you know, like, well, that's what you're doing. That's what, that's really what you're doing. You're, you're on TikTok, you're reaching millions of people, like, getting them to kind of, you know, be, be aware of like, oh, I am doing that. I, I do, I do try to, could we, could we end with that? So what that, what is that video that you always show that, that posture? Most people, like I was totally guilty of this, doing yoga all the time. People like stand up straight. I'd be like, like this. Totally. Right. Totally. But instead it's like this, right? Yeah. So these videos that I posted where I talk, you know, when you're, if, when you're hunched over, what do we, what do people do? What's their initial gut reaction when they realize they've been slouching for too long? They, right? <laughs> yeah. they, they sit up straight and, they, and then, you know, a minute later, they're back to here, right? <laughs> they, or they sit up straight and then that's all they ever try to do every single day is sit up straight, sit up straight, sit up straight, sit up straight. And mm. also a cultural thing, like sit up straight, son. Mm -hmm. Stuff straight, daughter. <laughs> you know, our grandparents grew up slapping us or some people, right? And so that can trigger emotions too in people, right? And so wow. these videos that I posted have gone viral multiple times. Um, you know, like you know, it's been pretty absurd the amount of views they can get. And it's about I tell people, don't do that. Stop trying to just squeeze your back together and stand up all straight because one, that turns you into, you know, someone who's just, you know, rigid and tight. And I thought we were trying to avoid that. Like, I thought we wanted to be, you know, posture is not, posture is not about being rigid and tight, you know, and, and it's about being fluid. It's about being dynamic. It's about moving throughout the day in your best alignment, whatever that looks like to you. And so when you sit up straight all the time, we have an autonomic nervous system that kind of just goes unconsciously. You don't have to think about it like breathing, right? And so when we're constantly sucking in our stomach, because I was doing that, I was guilty. Oh, I got to keep my core on while I'm sitting and standing up, right? I got to suck my stomach in when I'm running. It's like, <laughs> hold on. We just went from this being that's this fluid dynamic creature to like this like rigid type, <gasps> like small, like short breaths all the way up here through the throat and like our shoulders are jammed back. Like, is that good posture? Ah, I don't think so. I think that's unhealthy habits. And so instead of doing that, how about I show you something where you can just gently and, and in a way that kind of feels really good and like actually will give you some relief, improve your posture, get yourself back into a better alignment. And then when you start doing these simple little readjustments, you can calm throughout the day. Boom. That's a new moment of awareness for you in your body. Boom. That's a new moment of awareness for you in your body. Boom, that's a new moment where instead of just mindlessly sitting up straight, you're actually now doing like a fitness thing. So hold on. And now you're actually turning into someone that cares about their body. They're constantly doing these cool readjustments. Now you have this arsenal like of tools like at your disposal where all throughout your day, it's like, I'm going to do this one at first in the morning. Then I'm going to do this one. Now you're all now throughout the day, you're starting to move. Right. And why did I even come up with all this is because I do this all throughout my day. And I'm like, I'm just going to show people what I do. <laughs> and so it's so simple and easy. And that's why no one, no one thinks to post something like it because it's like, oh, that's so simple and easy. Why well, no one's going to care. Yeah, they do. They want simple. They want easy. They want effective. And so it gives people new awareness of their body and that can birth new opportunity. Now, maybe that person's going to start yoga. Maybe that person's going to start working out. Maybe that's going to change wow. some things for that person. And so that's what I'm looking to do here is show you how, you know, after a long flight, I want you to be that person that goes off the plane and starts doing their movement in the airport. Like, I want you to start being this person that consciously thinks about their body all throughout the day, every day. And no, not worrying about the body. No, being tending to it. You're tending to your body. And the more we can get out of here all the time, because, well, let's be honest, even if we're in here, we're usually not even really thinking deeply. We're just, you know, right. mindlessly going through the motions and monotony of our day you know, the TikTok mundane existence we're going through. I want you to get out of that 
and mm-hmm. get back into the body. I think that is a bigger opportunity. And so the videos go viral because so many people just sit up straight. And so instead I show them a quick little movement that they can do that makes them feel really good instantly because, Hey, when you get a little hit of dopamine, you want more. Right. And so, uh, it's just, you know, it, it's, I found something that works and obviously I play off of it, I have fun with it, but it's really awesome. all about deeper than just readjusting and having i love it with this whole with this whole like ai thing you know again i'm sure we'll find uses for it but like what you're teaching is like what i like to call just i just intelligence right (laughs) or like or like the bi body intelligence you know like it's like it's 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 amazingly constructed this whole this this machine and like you said you just need to tend to it Mm -hmm. and and it's not that much. That's the, that's the thing also. It's really not like you have to be a bodybuilder or, you know, like it's it's really like what you're talking about is just maintenance, which will, you know, have even more effect than all of those, those intense things. Right. And, and that's another thing. Unfortunately, we think we think of bodybuilders when we think of fitness or we think of like someone that goes to the gym. They must be, a, you know, a, a bodybuilder or someone that wants to get big and huge. It's like, no, man, it's. It's not about that. It's about, it's so everyone, it's like a part of your birthright as a part of your uh, soul contract. I like to say sometimes of uh, you got to tend to got to, you got to keep the body moving, man. That's what we're born to do. Or well, creatures- yeah. I like to say sometimes like your body is your soul mate. You know what oh. I mean? Like you oh. are like, like I, I, I often think about my body like that, you know, it's like, this is my first relationship. Like I need to tend to her. Nice. Or, or even thinking about my microbiome, like there's these guys and they have like this whole universe inside of me. So I love thinking about things in terms of a relationship. And absolutely, it's like when people don't take care of their body, it's just something, there's something to me psychologically a little bit off about that. It's like, like this is your best friend, mm. like, you know, in some weird way, mm-hmm. not to get attached to your body, obviously, you know, but but just, yeah, take good care of it. Right, right, right. Yeah. And like, that's another thing people, when they think of posture, it's like, oh, cause you just want to look good. It's not like, <laughs> right. You're physically, so you're physically in your best alignment. You're actually, your body is now working most efficiently to keep mm. you. The body wants to keep be to survive, right? It wants to stay right. alive, right? So when you're sitting down, it turns off your glutes to save energy. It shortens your hip flexors uh, to make these other muscles work better. So it's always about max efficiency. All these things are happening at once, no matter what position you're in. So you can thrive and not just survive, but so your body can thrive in any scenario, in any environment. So I'm like, how can we make the environment we're choosing to be in? Cause you got to take responsibility. Number one, how can I make my desk job that I am still choosing to be in? No one else is choosing it for me. How can I make that the most efficient for my body? And how can I overcome any pain that's inevitable probably from working here? Well, it's about starting right now, taking some action, regardless of your situation. And this position right here of hunched over, I mean, just going like this and opening your body up, that increases testosterone. You're, 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 you're increasing confidence, right? Like make a decision by going like this, make a decision, like a really big one. And then think about that same decision you're going to make doing this. This is a sorrow. This is, this is sadness. This is physiologically, you know, if you read these books, people write about the FBI talking to people like what, what, you know, trying to be a detective when people do these weird things with their bodies because they're lying or it's because it's like our body doesn't lie. Like we know you what the truth is. And when you're sad, when you're depressed, you hunch over. Okay. And so why are we hunched over all day, every day? Okay. Let's open up. Let's expand. And um, through that expansion, you're going to feel better. You're going to function better. You're going to perform better. So I say, stop what you're doing. Go outside for five for a minute and go like this and just open up your neck, open up your chest, open up the ribs, and then come back inside. See what that does for you. That's a really awesome tip, man. Yeah. At the end of doing like the 30 days, what are the, what, what are the results? They're going to, they're going to just know how to, they're going to like you said, they're going to have these weapons in their arsenal. They'll just be able to notice okay. these things and. Everything yeah. functions better. You're going to take your spine through new ranges of motion that you didn't even know you could. Like mm-hmm. you're going to see and feel and discover new spots of potential because anything that's restricted, anything that hurts, pain is just potential. Uh, loss of range of motion is just potential. Now you have more potential to gain, gain a better range of motion. You have more potential than me because I'm like so loose and limber. Someone that's tight has more potential than I do. It's You sure. feel good about that. Feel good about your limited range of motion. So you're going to 
experience what it's like to constantly move your spine every single day in new and differing ways. And let me tell you something, I know, you know, it's a lot of movement in there. I'm like, yo, do this for three minutes straight four times a day. That's like a lot of movement at the end of the day. Like it's like a lot. So take it at your own pace, but you're going to like, you're going to feel more mobility in your spine. Your neck is going to feel opened up, right? That can release some tension that can release some headaches, right? You're going to feel some, some momentum uh, from that increase in mobility, you know, healthier spine, right? Less pain. Right. And you're going to have a routine like a pocketbook. It's almost like a little pocketbook. You have a so everybody, everybody, before people decide to go lift heavy weights in the gym, everyone on the planet, if, if it was up to you, would learn these 30 days. It's like, because even if you don't go to the gym, this is incredibly going to benefit you. But especially if you want to go on and do some of that, what you would recommend that you learn this relationship with your body and how it moves and how it connects. Well, you know, I went to the gym first before learning this stuff. So I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that mm-hmm. I say whatever avenue you choose, it's better than, than choosing not to do anything. Uh, You're right. I'd rather you go into the gym and do some, do some things, try it, learn. But this, is, but this is this, if you were only going to do one, right. This would be more important, right? Like to do, to really get your, your posture and your movement and your habits good. Um, it really, it really is going to depend. Okay. On the, maybe I'm just, yeah, maybe I'm just reaching. Yeah, for it's going to really depend on the individual because you can get a lot of good work done on, let's say one of our programs that we have, you go to the gym and do some other things, mm. right? This is a bit more tailored to the individual like you, who, uh, you know, is realizing they could use some extra TLC for their body. And mm-hmm. in a way, they want to do it in a way that's uh, something that is like, Hey, I have these, now these cool new little routines that I can just do at any time, anywhere, any place. Mm-hmm. And so it's a complimentary piece to anyone's fitness already fitness lifestyle. Um, however, if you're someone who really is like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not really into the whole, like working out and doing all these things. And absolutely. If you can start mm-hmm. a 30 day posture progression, uh, you're going to be ahead of the game, like ahead of 99% of people, even people that do lift and do all these things, they could really benefit from getting their spine into these different types of ranges of motion. Cause it's just wow. so, so important to move your spine. And that's what posture progression is mainly about. We do end with some yoga flows at the end of it, but it's mainly about spine and neck which is, you know, houses all of our emotions. So it's like, you're going to be releasing stuff through that. The, the <laughs> neck, the neck is where all the emotions. Well, I mean, the nervous system is in that spinal cord. You know what I'm okay. saying? Right. Just, oh, right. Right. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, get, you got to move the spine every day. Like, is it, the spine yeah, was it, it's like, it's like a wire that connects yeah, to all. Yeah. It's like, you want the, you want the central electrical current flowing. <laughs> there you go, man. You know, that's why this stuff is so important, you know? And so like, what, like your heart is like the microwave, which uh, yeah, I don't like, <laughs> but, you know, the oven, you got all the things plugged into this thing and right. And, 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 you know, again, you go to a doctor, they're looking at like this one organ. Why don't we also look at the, uh, the, the, the you know, the, the flow of energy going through it and that's posture, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know it. You know it. <laughs> well, awesome, brother. Um, send me a link to to the 30 day progression, and everything, and we'll we'll put that yeah. in. Yeah, and, appreciate and, it. And yeah, brother, this is awesome. And uh, talk to you real soon. And thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, and once again, you're, you're an amazing guy. And I, I appreciate what you're doing over there, sharing your wisdom with the world. So I'm honored to be here. Well, we're, we're a team, man. We're going to help people with, you know, it's, it's all about bringing is optimization, right? So like, your component, my component, like we, yeah, we could really be, we all can like really function and feel like way better than we ever believed we could, you know? And like, you know, there's like the, the cultural standard for how good we're supposed to feel and how good we're supposed to function is set very low. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I just know with food, you know, food and like detoxification, like, like how crazy different, you know, you can feel and, but, um, wonderful, man. Have a great day, man. All right, Jason. Thanks so much.